Hey folks, Lake Speed Jr. from Total Silk Piston Rings, and I'm here at one of my favorite places, Driven Racing Oil, and tell me who you are, buddy. David Chamberlain with Driven Racing Oil. All right, so David and I have worked together for several years before I came uh, to Total Seal even. Yep. And one of the interesting connections between Driven and Total Seal is this product right here, yep. Assembly Loop, because, you know, <laughs> Assembly lube sometimes are like the redheaded stepchild of the lubricant industry. No one really has like real science behind their assembly lubes. They just kind of say, oh, you know, just use whatever. Yep. This way it's not dry. The more the better. The more the better, right? <laughs> or or my favorite, the homebrew concoction. You know, I take a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil with this I, and that. I use some of, yeah, I've had the, I use your break-in oil and I mix it with your assembly grease right. and you know, try to get all, all sorts of tricky. Oh, there's all kinds of backyard chemistry when it comes yeah. to assembly lube. But you know, <laughs> to try to reduce the amount of variables, uh, especially when it comes to piston rings and, and ring break-in, you, you need that break-in to go well, but there's something that happens before break-in that people kind of overlook, and that is the actual assembly process. When you're putting that engine together, you didn't put in all eight piston rings all at the same time. You didn't put all 16 rocker arms all at the same time. Right. You did them in sequence. Yep. So the engine is actually turning over. And so because of that, you know, the, the oil film is a calculation. It's called the Strybeck curve, which is viscosity times speed divided by load. Well, during the engine assembly, you have very little speed, but you still have load from things like these valve springs. Correct. So guess what you need to offset that? You need more viscosity. And that's where the HVL came in. Correct. That, that was the product we came up with. Yep. Uh, and right from the very beginning, Total Seal began using it um, on pistons, so the, actually the piston ring right. and the piston skirt. So that the piston skirt wasn't dry and that the rings themselves weren't dry. Right. Because the majority of your wear happens at that initial startup. So you're just trying to protect yes. it during that initial startup. Right. And then, of course, the braking oil, it's got the right chemistry to s help everything break in and be good. It's also compatible with this or the assembly grease. Uh, which great is point. Very important. Because that's the Russian roulette chemistry wise yeah. that can happen by using all kinds of different mix and match chemistries between assembly lubes and braking oils. You yeah. may not really know. To how use your all term, that's work. yeah. To use your term, you want the right soup. Yeah, it is the right soup. So that was the nice thing about the braking oil and the HVL. They use the same chemistry. Correct. So they're compatible. They build off of each other. Yeah, this zinc is not fighting this zinc. You know, it's all it's it's the same. It's good soup. Yep. So and that's the whole thing is that you want to have you know the right lubrication on the cylinder wall to protect it, but you also need to have the right viscosity during that initial assembly. And that's where this whole package of lubricants comes in, that they weren't just like hodgepodge put to, you know, thrown together. These were actually selected and then tested to do the job. Correct. And they all have a certain purpose. So mm -hmm. you're, you know, a lot of engine builders would like to use something like this, a lube on mm -hmm. their Babbitt bearings, rod, main bearings, cam bearings, because they're going to have a better feel by hand right. as they turn the motor over. Compared to, say, grease. Compared to the assembly grease mm -hmm. where it's going to have a little bit of drag and if there's something catching, you can't quite tell what it is. So there's just a, you know, engine builders love to have that feel by hand as they're mm -hmm. turning the motor over, as they assemble each each rod assembly to the crankshaft. Exactly. And and so that's what this can provide. And then the, the grease is perfect for cam and lifters yep. or push rod tips, yep. rocker arms, things like that. And use it in very in moderation, please, because yeah. we don't want grease getting in the cylinder wall. Correct. Because you, that will take up those peaks and valleys and ruin your surface finish, yep. which is critical to the ring performance. So that's one nice thing about the driven assembly grease, though. It's actually designed to dissolve in the braking oil. Correct. So it doesn't leave chunks of grease floating all around, which again can get in your cylinder wall and cause ring seal problems that you don't want. Because that's the beauty of the driven product line. Uh, and I know I'm a homer on this because I used to work here for a long time. I could step out and he's, he's, he's 
got those, yeah. But the, but the thing about it is that we always thought about everything as a system. Yep. That it wasn't just a product in isolation. It's how do all the products work together so that you have that relay race, essentially. Right, right. You can hand off from assembly grease to HVL to breaking oil to the running oil. That everything is designed to work in sequence. Right. And again, it's not like we have one assembly lube. We have multiple assembly lubes that are purpose built for certain certain components. Just like our engine oils, they're specific they're specific for certain applications, assembly lubes were going at it at the same approach. Yeah, same application specific chemistry. Yep. You know, I remember somebody saying application always dictates, dictates chemistry. chemistry yep. Yeah, I don't know. It's Motor before the molecule. Yeah, something like somebody that. Somebody taught me that. I don't somebody know who that. Who knows? He's probably, <laughs> probably gone. You shouldn't listen to that guy. But anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of a rant, if you will. Yeah. And we've made some we've made some cool updates. And one thing we want oh, to get sure. into is some of the updates we've made to the HVL. You might notice this new little GP1 on, on it here. We've updated it with the Pennsylvania grade base oil. So unlike other assembly loops that are using a tack of fire right. to, to, make get, to get that nice sticky uh, cling and, and, and tacky, yeah. uh, we're actually doing that with the you base oil. You can't see this from over here, but there's no, a get string some, yeah, get some. all the way in between just like that. Yep. I mean, it is tacky. And before we had to add tackifier. We would add tackifier to it, which is, is kind of, it's not really a natural approach to it. By using the base oil, you now have an assembly lube that has that tack and has that cling. Mm -hmm. It's going to stay put, just like our gel when we came out with the gel. Yes. It's going to stay put. Uh, it's not going to have too much drag. But the best thing about it is the, by doing it with the base oil is it's very shear stable. Right. It's so going to be gonna, what it's always going to yes. be. It's never going to change. So it's going to definitely help with that initial protection. You can, you can feel it. I mean, I know this doesn't sound very scientific, but you can literally... Oh, engine builders always, yeah, that's there, what they there, do. The first thing they right do, they grab like, it and they're they're doing this. Uh, there, you can feel it. It's like, man, there's substance yep. in here. Yep. It's not just chemistry of like tegafire, which will make it stringy, but it doesn't add any bulk to it, add any viscosity. This, you can feel that viscosity. So you know that it's going to give you the protection that you need. So let's say you've got a high compression engine you're putting together. And as you roll that thing over, now you know those parts, those skirts, the bearings, everything in there is going to be protected properly yep. during that most critical time. Because as we've seen from all the testing, from you know, cam wear testing, the grease testing, all that, the majority of that valve train wear is going to occur in the first two minutes. Correct. We know that the Pennsylvania Crade crude has some unique properties, and it's kind of cool to see this being incorporated in to the HVL. Yep. Get a nice little upgrade, always making things better here at Driven. Yep. Same technology from the GP1 oils incorporated in the assembly loop. I like it. That's that driven win uh, philosophy here in this company, which you got to love it. So, you know, hope you guys enjoyed this little tirade now uh, on assembly lubes and why it's so important not to just grab whatever so that it's lubricated. Use the right oil in the right system in order to get those uh, right benefits from it. Because, hey, if you do it right, you're going to get longer engine life and better engine performance. And I mean, if you go through all the trouble of putting engines together, you kind of want them get the best out of it. Correct. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.